Good morning, friends. It's a great time to be together again. What a time to be living in these days. Uh, I, we, most of us don't remember days as these days. In fact, all of us have never lived through a year like we've just been through. Yet Jesus being with us, what a joy. Outside our, our kitchen is a cassia tree. Now, cassia tree, uh, when it's in flower, is the most beautiful thing. And right now, this cassia tree in our garden is the most glorious tree in all of the garden. It is this bright yellow, um, uh, these flowers, which are bright yellow, and, they, and they're magnificent. But this morning, I was making a cup of coffee, and I watched as the petals began to drop on a paved path underneath the tree. And I realized I had the choice uh, of enjoying just the gentle dropping of the petals. Uh, just it was a pretty sight. Or I could have decided, oh, no, this is going to mean sweeping and cleaning. And when I walked outside and looked down the path, which runs underneath the cassia tree, it was the most beautiful sight. And it reminded me of a wedding. Friends, there is a great wedding day that is coming. The groom, Jesus, is coming back for his bride, which is us, the church. What a glorious day. What, a, what an incredible moment that is going to be. And now for us to be focused on the things of Jesus and to be focused on the day that he comes back again helps to give us perspective in days which are, make no mistake, um, have been difficult and tough. Friends, I want us to remember that prophetic picture uh, that Jesus gave us in February last year, 2020, of Jesus the shepherd standing at a gate and uh, his back to the gate, the camp. It was, a, it was a very South African scenario because it was a camped off farm with a flock of sheep and a shepherd. And the flock of sheep were in front of him with this closed gate behind him. And... Um, he told us just to not rush, not to, not to uh, try and charge in through uh, other means, but wait for him. And when he opened the gate, we'd all go in. And the camp that we had been in as the flock of sheep uh, had been grazed, not overgrazed, but it, would, it was time to move on. And it was a beautiful picture for us of what was to come. And who would have imagined that just a month later or six weeks later, uh, there we were under lockdown. But friends, here we are, and uh, Jesus has taken us into this new camp, we believe, um, speaking specifically for us as River Church here in, um, in northern Zululand. But it's important for us, um, even in this new pasture, to stay close to the shepherd and not to go charging off into the field, not to go running off on our own into this great new pasture that the shepherd has led us into. And friends, that never changes, no matter what the season, to stay close to Jesus, to stay focused on our shepherd, to see his every move and to move accordingly uh, in our following him never changes. In these days, friends, there's so much that's going on around us. There's um, some, some of those things are are good things, uh, amazing things. I mean, I, I, this year, I've been absolutely astounded and amazed at what Jesus has done in building his church. Uh, I have seen uh, growth in church, and I've seen growth personally in myself and Kim, uh, in, in, in the church, and also just growth in numbers of people. There's growth, there's life, there's light. And uh, more clearly, seen in this last year than I think I've seen in the 12 years that we've led church. And uh, what a joy that is. There have also been not such good things. The challenge to stay focused in, this, in the middle of this constant barrage of, of media, of world media. And so staying focused has been a real challenge when, um, these, these, um, when the media is... is bombing us with all sorts of things morning, noon, and night. This morning, my friends, I want to, and I would love to lift our gaze again 
to focus again on the great shepherd and in doing so to encourage us to um, as a flock to keep pressing into Jesus so I'm just lifting our chins I'm lifting our gaze um, for some of us we may be in a place where we're looking at a year ahead and wondering what on earth's coming and are a little um, in trepidation over what's coming friends I want to lift our chin I want to lift our gaze I want us to gaze on the king gaze on our shepherd Jesus who's going to lead us through this year and just as he did last year he's going to lead us to victory victory is the song of Jesus victory belongs to the shepherd of the king and victory is ours through what Jesus did on the cross for us and so that is what I want to breathe into us and I'm praying that the Holy Spirit does that this morning I'm praying that this morning the Holy Spirit gives us a fresh revelation of the same King Jesus our loving glorious conquering victorious King who also is our Shepherd and amazingly the word speaks of him he calls us even his brothers and so friends, this is who I want to refocus us on this morning. And um, what I, uh, I, I also want to say is that um, by, um, if we're not constantly aware of, of Jesus, if we're not constantly uh, focused on Jesus, just knowing uh, that our proximity is close to Jesus, we can wander away quite easily from his presence. We can drift slowly and all of a sudden we find ourselves in a place where we can no longer see the rest of the flock or Jesus. That's how the one sheep strayed off from the 99. But we don't want to do that, friends. Um, because when we get out on our own, we become isolated and afraid. And, and sometimes, very often, uh, in my case, at the mercy of um, the thoughts of my mind, when it's away from Jesus. And those thoughts are destructive thoughts. And they don't belong to the king. They don't belong to me. And so um, I want to refocus us again this morning on Jesus. So we're going to read from uh, John's gospel from the first chapter and uh, from verse 1 to verse 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Isn't that beautiful? I've got four, four observations to make of the greatness and the, and, the, and the glory of Jesus, our King and our Shepherd. I've got four observations from this that I'd like to share with us. And um, in it, I just pray that the Holy Spirit does the work of Reenvisaging re us, refocusing us on Him. The first two verses of that um, passage says this: "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He was in the beginning with God." The Word, friends, is Jesus. And the, and if we trans, if we if we put Jesus in, we would say, "In the beginning was the Word, which is Jesus, and the Word Jesus was with God, and the Word Jesus was God." And he was in the beginning with God. And so Jesus was in the beginning with God. Jesus wasn't someone who was added after creation because of a need. Jesus was with God in the beginning. It was the plan of God. That is just how it was. Jesus was from eternal past and will be to eternal future. Jesus was, was with God in the beginning. And so, friends, Jesus is not subject to any power or principality. God raised him from the grave and placed him, as Ephesians 21 says, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. Jesus is over all. Our King and our Lord and our Shepherd is over all. He was at the beginning with the Father. He is now. He will be forever. There is nothing that is greater than He is. And He stands close to us. In fact, closer than close because He lives in us by His Spirit. And He shepherds us by His Holy Spirit. And so He is not far. He is close. And He is also the one who has overcome all darkness. 
and anything that would be opposed to us, Jesus has overcome. Ephesians 1, 21 says um, this of, of Jesus, who has been raised from the grave by God, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. Just to repeat that, to understand, to get that he is king of all kings, Lord of all lords, and there is none that can unseat him or unsettle him. This is our King Jesus. The second um, uh, part of the same first point is that Jesus is in fact equal to the Father is what we see here. <clears throat> he, is, he has been given a position with the Father. Hebrews 1 verse 3 says this, He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. He sat down at the right hand of God on high. This is our king, Jesus. He's the radiance of the glory of God. He is the exact imprint of his nature. He upholds the universe, friends. Excuse me, we are outside. <laughs> I love this, that this, the, the picture of the disciples in the boat um, and uh, how Jesus calms the, sto the storm in Mark chapter 4. There was uh, an incredible tempest raging and the disciples were, were about to be sunk in this boat, so they thought. And they wake Jesus up and Jesus speaks over the storm. He speaks over the wind and there was a great calm. And I spoke about that a little bit in this last week, in that message I put over to us as a church. But this is the power and the majesty of God, the power and the majesty of Jesus. As, uh, as, as he speaks over the world that he was a part of creating. And, and Jesus amazingly put this great power aside for a while. Philippians 2, 6-7 says this about this, our great king, our shepherd, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as being a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. So King Jesus, reigning with the Father and the Holy Spirit, humbles himself to be born as a man on the earth. He put aside his godly position. He made himself nothing in the world's eyes. He became a servant king. He puts his equality with the Father aside, friends. This is the heart of our king. This is the heart of our shepherd. He came as a king, but as a servant king to serve us, as a shepherd to lead us, his prized flock of sheep. This is our king. This is Jesus. He became fully a man. Hebrews 2 verse 17 says, Therefore he had to be made like his brothers in every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. Jesus was made like us in every way. Yet he was without sin. So he could save us from our sin by taking away our sin and putting it on himself. Remember the word propitiation is a word we've bumped into a couple of times recently or in this last couple of months where Jesus removes our sin from us and carries it, puts it on himself. And so we have this amazing king who is these things. He is uh, with God. He was with God from the beginning. He is God. He uh, is not subject to any other power or principality that's in the world. He is equal to the Father. And Jesus puts his equality aside for a while. He chooses. The Father sends him and he agrees. And he chooses to put his equality with God aside to come to earth. And he becomes fully man so that he can be our Lord and our Savior. So he can save us from our sins. 
Then the second point, Jesus was involved in all of creation. If we look at the third verse in, that, in, in, the, in John 1, all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Friends, there is nothing Jesus does not know about. We may have secrets that we can hide from people. Jesus knows about those. He wants us to share those with him. He wants to lift the burden from us. Jesus knows all about them. Nothing surprises him. This last year, 2020, did not catch Jesus by surprise. He knew it was coming. He was with us through it and continues to be. Nothing surprises him. He was involved in all of creation. He knows all about everything that was created. He's been given authority over all of creation. And so isn't that a glorious thing to know? That he was involved in creation. That God, it says there, if we go back quickly, it says uh, in, in um, the, the beginning part of that uh, passage, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He was in the beginning with God. And all things were made through Him, through the Word. God made, He created through the Word, who is Jesus. It's an amazing thought. And so Jesus was involved in all of creation. The third point, friends, is that is John 1 verse 4, which says, um, out of John 1 verse 4, the fourth verse of this passage, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. All life finds its source in Jesus. All life. I'm not talking about death. I'm talking about life. All life finds its source in Jesus. The life Jesus brings us and gives us freely when we come to him brings us into his light. So the life he brings us, the life he offers us, that when we take it, it brings us into his light. Now friends, we know the, 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 the wonderful thing that it is to walk in the light. But we also know on a dark night and as Eskom has cut and uh, we've not been aware of this coming, so we've not been prepared maybe. And uh, we fumbled around in the dark for a while, kicking our toes on chairs, and, and it's unpleasant. And you're unsure and uncertain. But Jesus brings us into the light so we can walk in the light. For us to enjoy a life of freedom, he sets us free. That Jesus paid for for us. We turn our eyes to him. We look to him. Because there's nowhere else that this kind of life can be found. And he gives us light to walk in. Acts 4 verse 12 says this, And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Jesus is the only one who is our salvation. Jesus is the only one who brings us, who gives us salvation, who paid for our salvation. With his own life. And so all life, friends, finds its source in Jesus. And the last point is that this life, it says, is the light of men. In verse 5, um, it says in verse 5 of that passage, um, it says this. The light shines, uh, it says, um, all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Here it is here, verse 5. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines, this light of Jesus shines in the darkness. This light of Jesus has overcome the darkness. That's what it says. <clears throat> this light that we carry, that is Jesus, Christ in us, the hope of glory, is light that shines in darkness. And so we, we've been called, friends, to live bringing light into dark places. Jesus saved us from a dark place through obedient men and women who found us on this road, fumbling around and brought us into the light. 
We are those who have been called to bring others into the light. This glorious Jesus, our shepherd, has commissioned us, has conquered and has commissioned us to go now into places where, where, where people are still in the dark and need to be drawn into the light. I love this, that the light has overcome the darkness. It's a beautiful picture that where you come, filled with the Holy Spirit, born again, spirit-filled believer, where you arrive in an area, where you arrive in a place that is dark even when it's daytime, you bring real light. As you are amongst those people preaching the gospel, both with your mouth and in your life, before them, that brings the light of Jesus, which sets people free. Friends, this light of Jesus is the light of men. It's the light in us which, which sets us a light. It is the whole reason we've been created is to worship the Father and to be obedient to Him. It's a glorious thing. I love that picture of the light, of, of the, of the light invading darkness. I know, speak that over us today. Be invaders of darkness. Over every one of us that are listening the, to this right now today, I just have a sense what, what the Holy Spirit is wanting to do is to make you an invader of darkness. You are probably already, but let this be a revelation to you that you are invading darkness. And so I speak that over us, that we become invaders of darkness and bringers of light. Because darkness recedes at the presence of Jesus. So friends, in conclusion, <clears throat> in conclusion, John 16, verse 33, Jesus says this to his disciples. He says, I've said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I've overcome the world. The great shepherd Jesus is the power. He is the authority over all of creation and we can absolutely and implicitly trust him with our lives with our futures let's stay close to jesus let's focus on jesus let's press into him all of who we are let's surrender that to jesus if you haven't done that already let's do that even now if you've never surrendered to Christ, if you've never surrendered your life to Jesus, if you've never asked Him for forgiveness for your sins and surrendered your life to Him so that He can come into your life and become the light of men, ask Him right now. If that is what is in your heart, if that is your heart's cry, then ask Jesus, Lord, wouldn't you come into my life? And then find somebody that you can tell about that, who can help you and walk you through. Because it's a, it's a thing of, of growth. It's a thing of now you're a baby, having given your life and surrendered your life to Jesus. There is growth now that must happen. Find someone who's a born-again believer, who loves Jesus, who follows Jesus. And ask him to tell him what you've done and ask him to walk you through this. Stay close to Jesus, friends. Follow him boldly trusting Him in everything so that we can see His kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven.